it's Mrs. Book Milty on Wednesday, the 27th of January, and we are here with maths, and we are going to be working from the year two maths workbook today. Okay, we'll be carrying on with multiplying, and I thought just to get our brains in gear thinking about our multiplying, we're going to start by practicing counting in twos, in fives, and in tens. Okay, so we'll do it all together, starting in twos. So two. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, and we'll stop right there. We'll stop when we get to twenty-four because that would be twelve times two, wouldn't it? And that's when we're thinking about times tables, all we would really go up to. Right, so we're going to start with counting in fives then. We'll stop when we get to 60. Okay, so I'm giving you a little clue there. We're going to go to 60. Are we ready? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Now we'll stop there. I bet you could keep going with that one. I know we thought the other day, didn't we, finding our multiples of five, so we know they end in a five or a zero. The one I think we're going to do the easiest, let's go all the way to 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. We did a real super job. We had to count in those multiples the other day, didn't we, counting in tens. Well done. Keep practicing that because that will help you work out your times tables by being able to count in those numbers. Okay, right, we're going to do another little activity now where we practice what we thought about with multiplying. Okay, so for today, what we are thinking about is can I multiply two numbers using a number line or using grouping? And can I begin? to see the relationship between multiplying and dividing. Okay, what I'm going to do is use my dice to give me two numbers. Okay, so my first number is two, and I'm going to be multiplying, so we need our times sign, and then my second number is five. Okay, and what we know about multiplying is that we can swap the numbers around and do them in any order, just like we can when we are adding, okay? So I could count in twos, or I could count in fives to work that one out, or I could do it where I draw some groups or I draw an array, okay? Let's have a go, because we've got two times five, we've got two lots of Five. So let's count in fives two times. Five, ten. Right? We could swap it over though so that it would read five times two equals, or five lots of two, or five multiplied by two. So this time we're going to check that we still get the same answer by counting in twos five times. So we've done two lots of five. Now let's check that it's the same by doing five lots of two. So five lots of twos, counting in twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. And because we are all able to count in twos and fives, if we have a multiplication question where we're multiplying by two or five, we can do our counting. Okay, but we could also do our grouping or our arrays, which we're going to come on to maybe with the next question. Let's have a little look. So what's it going to be this time? Let's have a see what number are we going to get. Oh, four this time. So four times three. Four times three equals Okay. What would it be if I swapped it around then? What other number sentence could I write using those two numbers? I could have four times three, or I could have three times four, couldn't I? I could have three times four. Now, I'm not 
not very confident at counting in my threes or my fours, and I don't think that you will be too confident in those yet either. So what we're going to have a think about to help us work that out is that how we can draw it using our whiteboards. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw what we call an array. Okay, we're going to use an array. So I need, if I think about just the first one, four lots of three. So I need groups of three. There's one group of three. So if we can see a bit better. There's two lots of three. There is three lots of three and there is four lots of three okay so i've got four lots of three all together and i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay i can also use the same array though to work it out that way so the first time I had groups of three. So my groups were going across like that. There was one group, two groups, three groups, four groups. But I could also use my array to work out three lots of four. Three times four. So there's one group of four, there's two groups of four, and there is three groups of four and we haven't added or taken any numbers away so we've still got 12. Okay? So sometimes when you can draw an array your array can actually show more than one number sentence. Okay? So if it is that you can't count in your tables then drawing the groups out using an array is a good way of working it out. Okay. Let's just have a look then at one more. And I want to see if you can have a go at doing this one on your boards. Oh, so we've got two again. Two times three. Two times three equals. Okay, now I bet you can work that one out. When you've worked it out, if you do it by counting, because we have got the number two, if you do it by counting in twos, can you draw me the array on your board that matches it? So pause the video now, have a go at drawing the array that matches it, and then you can see if you've got it right. Okay, so I'm going to go over it now. I'm going to swap it around because I can count in my twos easier than I can count in my threes. I'm going to count in twos three times. I'm counting in twos three times. Two, four, six. Okay. And I can also use an array to help me. So I could do two groups of three or I could do three groups of two. Okay. There's one group of three. There's two groups of three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I would like to see your board today, some lovely arrays that you are working out. Okay, now I've got a very similar number sentence to the one we've just had. And what we can do when we're thinking about multiplying, just like we did when we thought about adding and subtracting, we can swap the numbers around. So if we know one number sentence, there will be other number sentences that we know. Okay, so if I know three times two equals six, what other number sentence, that's multiplication number sentence, do I also know? Without doing any working out, Mrs Wood sometimes calls this buy one, get one free, I think, doesn't she? If I know three times two equals six. I also know that two times three equals six. Don't I? I also know two times three equals six. But there might be another way I can write that down. Because what I could also do is I could also move this part to the start of the number sentence. Now, we can't start with the equal sign. We have to start with a number. But we can move the number and the equal sign to the start and then keep the two multiple bits the same, the two numbers we're multiplying. So 6 equals 3 
times 2 or 6 equals 2 times 3. And to get our numbers in the right place, what we have to remember is when we are multiplying, we're getting bigger, aren't we? If we've got lots of groups of things, then all together we've got to have a bigger number than how many is in each of the group or how many groups there are. So the number that goes with your equal sign has always got to be the biggest number and the numbers either side of your multiplication sign either side of your time sign have got to be the smaller numbers. Okay, here I've got then four times five equals 20. So I've given you that number sentence. Could you pause the video now and see if you could write me down three of the number sentences that you also know just using those facts. So have a little look. We swapped the numbers around and then we also did two where the biggest number, the answer, was at the start. Can you have a go at doing that with four times five equals 20? Give the video a pause and have a go. Okay, how did you get on? Let's just see if you've got the same number sentences as me. So I know four times five equals 20. I'm not going to do any working out or any counting or drawing anything. I also know now that five times four equals 20 because I can swap the numbers around. Okay? Four times five, five times four. We can switch those numbers around. And the biggest number has always got to be at the end where the equal sign is or the biggest number might be at the start and the two smaller numbers might come after. So you might have written, hopefully, 20 equals 4 times 5 and 20 equals 5 times 4. So remember that because we are going to need it later when you use your workbook, OK? Remember, the numbers either side of the multiplication sign are the smaller numbers and the number that we've totaled with the equal sign has got to be the biggest number, OK? Now, we've talked about arrays and grouping. This is another way of writing it down. So as well as drawing an array, an array is just that where we have it in the rows and the columns. You could also do it in groups. And you're going to have a question similar to this in your book today. So I've got some groups of fish. And what we've got today is putting that information into a sentence about it. Okay? So it says there are... So many groups of so many fish. Okay, how many groups have I got? One, two, three. Got three groups of how many fish? How many fish are in each group? One, two, one, two, one, two. There are two fish in each group. So remember, if you are using a grouping method, there has to be the same number in each group, doesn't there? So there are three groups of two fish. There are something times two equals three times two, isn't it? Because I've got two fish and I've got three lots of two fish or three groups of two fish. So there are three times two, which equals how many fish altogether? So remember, after the equal sign, we want the total number. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there are three groups of two fish. Three times two equals six fish altogether. Okay, six fish altogether. And we could have also represented that as well as grouping it in the circles by using our array. Okay, so we could have done one, two, one, two, one, two. We could have done it that way to show that we'd grouped them like that. Okay, so it depends how you see it best. You could do it in groups like that, or you could draw yourself three circles and sort the numbers into them equally. Okay, let's have a look at another one then. So there are so many groups of how many dots? How many groups have I got? How many groups of dots? One, two, three groups. 
of how many dots, how many dots in each group? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So three groups of five dots. There are three times five, which equals how many dots altogether? Now, what you could do is you could count each individual dot, or it might be because we can count in fives, that to make it quicker and more efficient, we count in fives. Five, ten, fifteen. There are fifteen dots altogether because three times five equals fifteen. Okay, so we've thought about doing our arrays and our groupings. We've thought about counting in our times tables. Okay, that went on twice. We've also got a question today where we asked to use a number line. Okay, we have done these with addition and subtraction, and we're going to go over it with how we would multiply. Okay, so if I had the multiplication four times two equals, what I need to do on my number line is to do four jumps of two. Okay, so I start from zero. And jump in two. So one, two, then one, two, one, two, then one, two. So I've done four jumps and I jumped two each time. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So my answer to four times two using my number line would be. Eight. Okay, I did four jumps and I jumped two each time. Okay. Another go at one of those then. See if you can explain to your grown up at home what you think we would do. Okay, now I'm going to write this one a little bit different. Two times six equals. We're going to think about how to do that on a number line. Do you think you would do jumps of six or do you think you would do jumps of two? Okay. You could do either, couldn't you? Because remember, you could switch them around. So you could do jumps of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. If you do it that way, you would get 12. Or because it's perhaps easier to count two at a time, you might do one, two, one, two, three jumps, four jumps, five jumps, six jumps. Okay, remember when we do it in twos, it's like we're missing one out, isn't it, each time. So two times six or six times two would be 12. Okay, now. This is the part then, we'll do one last part, where we begin to think about multiplying and linking it to dividing. Okay. So what I'm going to do with my same number sentence as I've already used, I'm going to have a go at drawing the array. I would like you to pause the video as well and draw me the array that shows 4 times 5 equals 20. Okay. Have a go. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Okay. So I did four lots of five equals twenty. Does your array look similar to mine? Okay. Now, that shows our multiplication, but just like addition and subtraction, we say they are the inverse of each other. They are like opposite operations. The same is true with multiplying and dividing. And that's what our divide sign looks like. A dot, then a line across, then a dot at the bottom. And when we divide it, we're going to do dividing more tomorrow, when we're dividing, it means we're sharing out. So we start with how many we've got all together. So we start.
start with 20 this time because 20 is how many we've got all together. And we've split 20 into groups of five. So all together, we've got one group of five, two groups of five, three and four. Okay, four groups of five. So four times five equals 20. So 20 divided by five would equal four. We had 20 all together. We divided them up into five. So one, two, three, four, fives. Okay, that shows how we can begin to link it to division. Okay, I would like to see if you can do the same with that one then. So pause the video, see if you can do yourself an array and see if you can work out what division fact matches that multiplication fact okay so three times two there's one group of three. Oh, i did i swapped it around the other way so you could either do it as groups of two or groups of three okay so i have six all together the biggest number has to go at the start for a division six all together i've divided it into groups of two there's one group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two. So six divided by two equals three. And we also know that there would also be another multiplication we could write by switching the two smaller numbers around. And it's the same with dividing. We could switch the two smaller numbers around to make another division. So maybe as a challenge today, you would like to draw yourself an array and maybe see if you could write four number sentences that match it, two multiplications and two divisions. That could be your challenge for today. So your activity for today is Maths Workbook Year 2, page 13. Okay, and hopefully all of the kinds of questions that you see are ones that we've practiced together. So we've got numbers in groups with the number sentence. We've got number lines. This one is how we thought about where the biggest number needs to be. So you've got to add in the multiplication and the equal sign. And then you're writing those multiplications as divisions. OK, hopefully you get on really well. Can't wait to see your learning year two. OK, tomorrow we'll be back and we're just thinking a little bit more about division tomorrow. OK, work hard.